Hi, it's such a delight to come into your homes today as we study living life. Each day it's a pleasure to study the scriptures with you, to go through, and to hear what God has to say to us. Today we're going to be in Zechariah chapter 11. We're talking about shepherds a little bit. Um, when you go to Israel, and I know I talk about Israel a lot, but I do love going there. Maybe one of these days we should do a living life um, a tour to Israel and all go together and experience the wonderful joys. But in Israel, there's still very much a presence of the shepherd's life. In fact, I love going to Bethlehem because you can still, still see the sheep and the, the shepherd's fields. And this last time when we were there, we actually got to go into a shepherd's grotto. And, and this family has been shepherds for centuries and they shared their life with us and they talked about being shepherds. Well, it wasn't a lot of as glamorous life because sheep need constant care and we are God's people and like sheep we need constant care. Let's look at what God has to say about shepherds today in the book of Zechariah. Zechariah chapter 11 verses 1 through 17 Open your doors, O Lebanon, so that fire may devour your cedars. Wail, O pine tree, for the cedar has fallen, the stately trees are ruined. Wail, oaks of Bashan, the dense forest has been cut down. Listen to the wail of the shepherds, their rich pastures are destroyed. Listen to the roar of the lions. The lush thicket of the Jordan is ruined. This is what the Lord my God says. Pasture the flock marked for slaughter. Their buyers slaughter them and go unpunished. Those who sell them say, Praise the Lord, I am rich. Their own shepherds do not spare them. For I will no longer have pity on the people of the land, declares the Lord. I will hand everyone over to his neighbor and his king. They will oppress the land, and I will not rescue them from their hands. So I pastured the flock marked for slaughter, particularly the oppressed of the flock. Then I took two staffs and called one favor and the other union, and I pastured the flock. In one month I got rid of the three shepherds. The flock detested me, and I grew weary of them and said, I will not be your shepherd. Let the dying die, and the perishing perish. Let those who are left eat one another's flesh. Then I took my staff called Favor and broke it, revoking the covenant I had made with all the nations. It was revoked on that day, and so the afflicted of the flock who were watching me knew it was the word of the Lord. I told them, If you think it best, give me my pay. But if not, keep it. So they paid me thirty pieces of silver. And the Lord said to me, Throw it to the potter, the handsome price at which they priced me. So I took the thirty pieces of silver and threw them into the house of the Lord to the potter. Then I broke my second staff called Union, breaking the brotherhood between Judah and Israel. Then the Lord said to me, Take again the equipment of a foolish shepherd, for I am going to raise up a shepherd over the land who will not care for the lost, or seek the young, or heal the injured, or feed the healthy, but will eat the meat of the choice sheep, tearing off their hooves. Woe to the worthless shepherd who deserts the flock! May the sword strike his arm and his right eye. May his arm be completely withered, his right eye totally blinded. In Zechariah 11, we're introduced to two different kinds of shepherds. We have the good shepherd who represents our Messiah, and then we have the worthless sh shepherd who represents and symbolizes all who prey on the flock from their unselfish motives. And sadly, the prophet tells us that the people really disdained both of the shepherds equally. Now, the fact that Jesus compares us to sheep is not really a compliment, by the way. You might think of this little white, fluffy sheep, but they need constant care. And they are among the dumbest creatures on the face of the earth. 
Uh, most animals in many cases will survive if they're released into the wild. They learn to fend for themselves and they make it. But a sheep released into the wild cannot survive. They will become prey. They have absolutely no survival skills. So think about this. We need care every day. He likens us to constant care. He likens us to not having any survival skills. And he likens us to needing to be totally dependent on him, on the Good Shepherd. And we know that he still loves us, even in our state of being these dumb sheep. Um, the sheep actually come to know the shepherd's voice. They actually come to discern their shepherd's voice and they'll follow him because they learn to trust him and they learn. They're smart enough to know this. Life is better with the good shepherd. That They're smart enough to know that. And so we today are looking at, uh, at this, this constant comparison through the good shepherd and the, the shepherd that's worthless. Now, it takes practice to learn his voice, as we talked about earlier in the week, and to experience, to learn not just his voice, but to learn obedience, because always obedience always brings blessing. I love this quote I, I ran across this past week. It says, obedience is revealed truth, guaranteeing guidance in matters unrevealed. Obedience to revealed truth guarantees guidance in matters unrevealed. Other words, when we hear his voice and we follow him in obedience, that revealed truth guarantees the revealed truth of knowing to obey guidance in matters unrevealed. Are you in a circumstance that you need revelation? You need answers? Just obey. My schedule gets really busy sometimes. In fact, I get so busy that my personal assistant gets so busy and then we're both so busy because she's being busy doing my stuff and I'm be being busy doing my stuff. So we get really, really busy sometimes and we get going and going and going and, and sometimes we just need to stop and we need to just be obedient and we need to just take one step at a time and that's what I found. When I get so busy and I see my personal assistant running in circles being so busy, we just have to stop and say, okay, just take one day at a time. Moms, just take one day at a time when you're parenting. Dads, just take one day at a time in your relationship with your kids and your wife. Pastors, just take a day at a time. Yes, we need to cast vision. We need to have vision. But we need to live life one day at a time because we have a good shepherd and we listen to his voice and we train our ear to hear his voice and we obey. That's the key. I can hear his voice all day long, but if I ignore the voice of the good shepherd and I don't obey, it does me no good. But if I'm smart enough to know that obedience to the good shepherd's voice always brings blessing, ah, that's a good life. Now we see in verses 1 through 3 that creation mourns because judgment is coming. Open your doors, O Lebanon, that fire may devour your cedars. Wail, O Cyprus, for the cedar has fallen because the mighty trees are ruined. And he talks about that creation mourns the actual destruction. Their glory is in ruins. There is the sound of roaring lions, for the pride of Jordan is in ruins. Wow. Think of that. Look at the Middle East and how some of these nations have risen up against Israel and against God's people in all of their pride. They're going to be destroyed. Now the Lord tells Zechariah that he is to actually assume the role of the good shepherd, even though they're marked out for slaughter. So he acts out the prophecy. He feeds the flock of sheep, those who are marked for slaughter. Without the sacrificial lamb, we were marked for slaughter. But Jesus took what we deserved on him. And God is full of grace and mercy. Now, even though the good shepherd shows God's favor to the sheep and seeks their unity, they still detest him. We see that in verses 9 through 11. Oh, that we would love God in his ways. I love the scripture that says, My soul follows hard after you, 
early in the morning will I rise up and seek you because you have been my help. That's the kind of following that God wants of his sheep to rise up and to follow him and to know that the good shepherd shows his favor to the sheep. Now, after being rejected, the good shepherd and Zachariah is acting this out. He asked for his wages, but he's only paid the price of a slave. He's given 30 pieces of silver. That is the lowest price that a slave could officially be paid for. Oh, when it tells us in Philippians that he lowered himself, he took upon himself the form of us. He stepped into our world. He stepped into our flesh and he became lower than a servant so that he could take what we deserved. And here we see that he is, it shows that Zacharias shows this prophetic that Jesus would come and he would receive only a slave's restitution. He would only be purchased for 30 pieces of silver. Now we know that as Zachariah is told to assume the role of a fully shepherd, we see that he experienced the rejection of the people and that's a foretelling of what would happen when Jesus would come. When we look at these portions of scripture and we read about what is to come and we think about where we are now, what is it that you need from the Good Shepherd? Are you following the Good Shepherd or are you following the Worthless Shepherd? Are you looking to have uh, your life satisfied with things that only bring emptiness? My mom, and I've shared this several times on the, the, as we've taped these, these shows, she had this plaque when we were growing up, only one life will soon be passed, only what's done for Christ will last. All that our earthly wanderings and looking for fulfillment in things other than what the Good Shepherd has for us will always leave us empty. But we can experience Psalms 23, laying down in green pastures, the Good Shepherd's rod leading and guiding us. We can be seated at the table with our enemies and surely goodness and mercy will follow us all the days of our lives when we allow ourselves to be led by the Good Shepherd. Now there's coming a day when we will see this good shepherd reestablish his rule and kingdom here on this earth. But as we look forward to that day, we revel now in the leadership of our wonderful Savior Jesus and experience the joy of being cared for and loved and being led by the one who loves us most. Perhaps today you feel like the task before you is too hard, and that's how the children of Israel felt. Um, Zechariah means the Lord remembers, and uh, the Lord remembers where you are, and he sees where you are, and he's coming to answer your prayers and to meet your needs. So our prayer today is that we would be those who listen, those who respond, and those who are patient in the coming of the Lord. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, we ask you to give us great faith in these last days. We ask you to give us perseverance, Lord, as we stand, as it says in Ephesians, having done all stand. Lord, we ask you to give us great favor, Lord Jesus, in believing for, Lord, your goodness and the fulfillment of your promises. And Lord, in, in being able to believe you for your provision. So, Lord, as we wait for your coming, we wait with anticipation and great joy as prisoners of hope, knowing that there is coming a day when we will see all things made new and all things restored according to your purposes. We thank you, Jesus. We pray a blessing over each listener today in your name. Amen. <music>